Tak suran militan yena tas my shri gurave namaha Nama Vishnu padaya Krishna pristaya bhutale Shremati bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine Namaste sarasati devi goravani pracharine Nirvishesha shanyavadi paschatya desatarine Vanchakaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitanam pavani bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhattavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 38, Akrura's arrival in Vrindavan. So Narada Muni did not mention about Krishna killing Yomasura. He didn't he didn't tell Kamsa about Krishna killing Vyomasura. Narada Muni came to see Krishna before he was telling he was praising Krishna. He was mentioning all the things Krishna is going to do. So Krishna killed two demons in one morning. First of all, early in the morning, he killed this uh, Kesi demon. And then later in the day, later in the morning, he killed the demon Vyomasura. So both the demons were killed in the morning and Akrura, he was told by Kamsa he had to go to Vrindavan, he should be in Vrindavan by the evening of the same day. So, uh, after Akrura got the instruction from Kamsa, then Akrura left. He left in the morning. He left Mathura on his chariot to go to Vrindavan. So Akrura is a great devotee of Krishna and when he was going to Vrindavan he was praying to Krishna all the way. He didn't know, he was thinking, I don't know what kind of pious activities I must have done to get this opportunity to go and see Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram in Vrindavan. This is the humility of a pure devotee. The devotee never thinks that I'm, I'm qualified, he always thinks I'm not qualified to serve Krishna. Akrura was thinking in himself that he was not fit for this opportunity to go to see Krishna. He considered, he was thinking himself a materialistic person. Akura 
Just like a materialistic person is not fit for understanding of the science of Krishna, so Akrur was thinking he was not qualified to go and see Krishna. In the same way, somebody who is a sudra, sudra, the laborer class, the working class people, fourth class people, they're not meant for studying the Vedas. In the same way, Akrura was thinking, I'm not qualified to go and see Krishna. But then he began to think that it's Krishna's mercy, and by Krishna's mercy it's possible. Krishna is allowing me to go and see him. It's possible. And he gave the example, just like some grass, pieces of blades of grass may be floating in the in, in the in the river. And the the grass somehow will it may get the shelter on the shore at the side of the river. In the same way, somebody who is a conditioned soul may get he, he may be saved from the material existence by the mercy of Krishna. เหมือนกับเอ่อสิ่งมีชีวิตนะที่พวกเขาเนี่ยอาจจะได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากคริชนาแล้วก็ปลอดภัยจากเงื้อมือของโลกวัตถุอัคร
So Krura thought, I'm so fortunate I will be able to see the, the same lotus feet of Krishna. I'll be able to see the beautiful face of Krishna. And I'll see his forehead marked with the tilak. Anakrua thought, I will also see his beautiful smile and his curling black hair. And Akrura, he saw an auspicious sign. There was an auspicious sign. The deer, there were deer moving and they were passing him on the right side. So that's very auspicious. So he understood that certainly I'm going to be able to see Krishna. แล้วก็หลังจากนั้นก็คือเอ่อมันมีเค้าเรียกว่าสัญญาณที่เป็นสิริมงคลเกิดขึ้นคือจากทางซ้ายเนี่ยอคุระได้เห็นกว้างมี
So Krishna is transcendental to the material energy and so are the people of Vrindavan. So Akurara was also thinking about Krishna's pastimes and he thought how they're so important. He said that Krishna's activities and teachings are all for the good, for the good of people in this world. People can remain Krishna conscious by talking about Krishna and remembering his pastimes and qualities. And the whole world, the whole universe can become auspicious and peaceful by Krishna consciousness. But without Krishna consciousness, then the world is just like a dead body, just like decoration of a dead body. So the body may be decorated, you may decorate very nice, but if it's dead, it's useless. In the same way, human society without Krishna consciousness is useless. So Akrura was thinking to himself that Krishna, the personality, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has come as one of the Yadu dynasty. And he established all the principles of religion. People who follow the teachings of Krishna are the demigods and those who don't follow, they are the demons. And, and Krishna comes to protect the demigods because they are his devotees. So Krishna protects the devotees and he kills the demons. It's always good for people to hear about Krishna's pastimes. So Krishna is also, he's the spiritual master of all spiritual masters. And he can deliver all the fallen souls. Anybody who is able to see Krishna, if they see him with, with the right eyes, with eyes of love of God, then it's a festival for the eyes. Krishna is so attractive that just by his good looks, he attracts the goddess of fortune to stay with him. Per, all the time. Krishna 
So Akura said to himself, when I reach Vrindavan, I'm going to get down from this chariot and I'm going to offer my obeisances to Krishna. The, the lotus feet of Krishna are always worshipped by all the great yogis and mystics, so I shall also worship his lotus feet. And Akura said, I want to become one of his friends in Vrindavan, just like the cowherd boys. And when I bow down before Krishna, then Krishna will put his lotus hand on my head. Krishna gives his hand to all the anybody who takes shelter at his lotus feet, then Krishna will will take him, Krishna will help him. So Krishna is he gives the shelter for everybody who is in the material world who is afraid of the material world. Krishna will give them shelter. So I want to feel the touch of his hand on my head. And Akura said, just like King Indra and King Bali, they became qualified to be the Lord of the universe just by the touch of Krishna's hand on them. And with the same hand, Krishna touched the gopis when they were dancing in Rasa Leela. And when Krishna touched them with his hand, then immediately they forgot all their tiredness. So Akrura, he wanted to get the blessings of Krishna's hand. And he knew about Indra. Indra is the king of heaven and he's, he's in charge of the three worlds, the, the upper and the middle and the lower planets. They're all under Indra. So when Indra offered a little water to Krishna, Krishna accepted that. And because Indra offered to Krishna, Indra became king of heaven. And Bali Maharaj, he gave three, piece, three steps of land in charity to Lord Vamanadev. And he gave a little water also to Lord Vamanadev. And Bali Maharaj also got the position of Indra.
And when the gopis were dancing with Krishna, Krishna wiped his hand. And, and just from the touch of Krishna's hand, the gopis became refreshed. In the same way, Akrura, he wanted to get a benediction from the hand of Krishna. Krishnas can give benedictions to all kinds of people, anybody who becomes Krishna conscious. So if somebody wants material happiness, Krishna can give them that. And if somebody wants liberation from material existence, Krishna can give it. But if one wants pure love for Krishna and personal association with Krishna, Krishna can also give that. So Akrura was worried because he knew that he'd been sent by Kamsa and Kamsa was the enemy of Krishna. And he thought, anyway, he thought, Krishna knows my heart. Krishna's in everyone's heart. So Krishna knows that I'm not really a friend of Kamsa, but I'm just doing this as a service. So although although Kamsa had sent Akrura, Akrura was not a follower of Kamsa. He wanted, he was a devotee of Krishna. But he took this service, he took this job to be Kamsa's servant, to take this, to come to Vrindavan to get Krishna and Balaram, because he wanted to meet Krishna and Balaram. So Akrura thought, Krishna will know I'm not his enemy. He will know I'm his devotee. And Akrura thought, when I meet Krishna, uh, I, he will be pleased with my devotional service. And he will look at me and then he will bless me. Krishna will embrace me. He said, I am a member of the Yadu dynasty and I am also his relative and I am also his pure devotee. So just by the touch of his body, my heart and soul will be freed of all reactions of my past. And I will st I'll fold my hands and stand humbly before him. And Krishna and Balaram, they will call me, Oh, Akrura, uncle. And 
And Akrura thought, he said, in this way my life will be successful because I will be recognized by Krishna. So Prabhupada explains, he said, we should try, everyone should try to be recognized by Krishna by doing service and by devotion. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says he is equal to everyone, but he has a special interest in his devotees. And Krishna also reciprocates with the person according to the service, how much service they do. So Akrura thought Krishna is just like the desire tree in the heavenly planets, which gives the fruit according to the desire. We just have to serve him and then be recognized by Krishna. We should try to serve both the Guru and Krishna together in the same way make progress in Krishna consciousness. So the spiritual master guides us. The spiritual master is the representative of Krishna and he tells us how to serve Krishna. And if we can satisfy Krishna, if we can satisfy the spiritual master, then we satisfy Krishna. Just like in the government office, you have to work under the supervision of the head of the department. If the head of the department is satisfied with you, then the, the, then you'll get promotion, then you'll get more salary. So Akrura thought when Krishna and Balaram are pleased with me, then certainly they will take my hand and they will bring me to their home and they will feed me, and they will receive me nicely and they will ask me about everything, about my, about the activities of Kamsa. And so Akrura, he is known as the son of Swafoka and uh, he was meditating like this on his way, on his journey, coming from Mathura and then he came, he finally reached Vrindavan by the end of the day. So when he reached Vrindavan, the sun was already setting, it was going, sun was going down, so it was evening. And when he reached Vrindavan, then he saw all the cows and all the footprints of the cows and then he saw Lord Krishna's footprints also in the ground and he could see the marks of Krishna's footprints. 
แล้วตอนที่ท่านเนี่ยถึงบินดาวันเนี่ยตอนนั้นเนี่ยมันก็เป็นช่วงเย็นแล้วนะกว่าอากุราจะถึงบินดาวันเนี่ยก็เป็นช่วงเย็นแล้วก็เป็นตอนที่กฤษณาเนี่ยได้กลับมาบ้านแล้วแล้วก็มีวัวกลับมาแล้วอากุราเนี่ยก็จะได้เห็นรอยพระบาทรอยเท้าของพวกวัวแล้วก็เขาจะเห็นรอยเท้าของกฤษณาด้วย So the symbols on the soles of Krishna's lotus feet, they're worshipped by the great demigods and great personalities in the three worlds. So when a k r u a saw the footprints of Krishna, he immediately jumped down from the chariot. And he was in ecstasy, and he began crying, and his body was trembling. And Akrura could understand this dust had been touched by the feet of Krishna, so Akrura fell flat on his face, and he began to roll on the ground. All over the dust. So a k r u r a s journey to Vrindavan is a very important example for us. Anybody going to Vrindavan, you have to follow the footsteps of a k r u r a And always think, always think of Lord Krishna. The Akura เนี่ยเป็นตัวอย่างที่ดีมากๆสำหรับสาวกที่กำลังจะเดินทางไปวินดาวันคือในระหว่างทางที่เราไปเนี่ยเราควรที่จะคิดถึงวิชาในลักษณะนี้และเวลาไปถึงก็ควรที่จะมีพฤติกรรมแบบ And as soon as you reach the boundary of Vrindavan, we should take the dust of Vrindavan over our body, and we shouldn't think about our material position. And we shouldn't worry about our cloth. There's a famous song by Naratam Das which p r o p h e t often sings. Vishaya chadiya kabe shuda habiman. When my mind, when my mind will be purified after leaving the contamination of material enjoyment, then I'll be able to see Vrindavan to actually visit Vrindavan. มีบาจานาหนึ่งนะคะที่เขียนโดยนารตัมดาสทากุแล้วก็ศิลปรพันเนี่ยทรงชอบนำมาร้องมากมากเลยนะคะคำแปลก็คือบอกว่าเมื่อไหร่เมื่อไหร่จิตใจของข้าเนี่ยจะเป็นอิสระจากความต้องการสนองความสุขกับโลกวัตถุนี้สักทีแล้วจะแล้วเมื่อนั้นเนี่ยข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยถึงจะสามารถได้เห็นบรรดาวันอย่างแท้จริง So Prabhupada said, you can't, you cannot go to Vrindavan just by buying a ticket. If you want to go to Vrindavan, you have to follow this example of Akrura. So Akrura came into Vrindavan, and he saw Krishna and Balaram, and he saw they were, they were. Supervising the milking of the cows, and Krishna was in yellow cloth, and Balaram was in blue cloth, and Akrura saw that the, their eyes were just like beautiful lotus flowers. Now, when Akrura came, Akrura saw that Krishna and Balaram were just like beautiful lotus flowers. And he could see that Krishna and Balaram were young men, and they had the same bodily features. 
Only Krishna was blackish and Balaram was white. And they were both the shelter of the goddess of fortune. And they had very nice strong bodies and beautiful hands and pleasing faces. And they were they were as strong as elephants. So when they when Akrura saw their footprints with the all the auspicious marks like the flag and the trident and the thunderbolt and the lotus, then Akrura actually saw Krishna and Balaram face to face. So first he saw the footprints and then he actually saw Krishna and Balaram. <laughs> So Akrura could see Krishna and Balaram, they were smiling at him, they both were looking at Akrura, smiling, and Akrura could understand that Krishna and Balaram had just come back from taking care of the cows in the forest. And they had taken their bath after coming back from the forest. They took their bath and they were dressed with clean cloth and they had beautiful flower garlands on and necklaces made of beautiful jewels. And their body was covered with pulp of sandalwood. So Akrura could appreciate the, the aroma, the scent of all the flowers and the sandalwood and the, as well as their bodily presence. So he can, Akura was thinking he's so fortunate to see Krishna, the personality of Godhead, with his brother, with his expansion, Balaram, and he's seeing them face to face. And he knows that they are the original personalities of the creation. So Akrura knew their mission, why they've come in the world, to establish religious principles and kill the demons and please the devotees. So Akrura immediately got down from his chariot and he fell flat like a stick before Krishna and Balaram. And when he touched the lotus feet of Krishna, he became overwhelmed with bliss and his voice choked up, he could not speak. Tears were coming from his eyes and he was in ecstasy. 
And, but he, could, he, he couldn't see, he couldn't see, he couldn't speak. So Lord Krishna is very kind to his devotees. So he saw a Krura like this and he picked him up and he embraced him. And then Balaram also embraced Akrura and then both Krishna and Balaram took him by the hand and they brought him into their sitting room and they offered him a very nice place to sit and they washed his feet, they brought water to wash his feet. And then they gave Akrura, Krishna and Balaram gave Akrura a cow, one cow in charity, and then they brought him very nice food, nice dishes, and they, they begged him to please take, please eat. And after he'd eaten, then they brought betel nut and spices just to finish the meal. So this is a very custom to receive a guest, even if the person is your enemy. If he comes to your home, you should receive him just like a guest, just like a friend. And even if, you, if we are poor and somebody comes, we should give him a straw mat and a sitting place and a glass of water to drink. So Akrura was given a very nice reception by Krishna and Balaram and then Nanda Maharaj came and Nanda Maharaj was speaking to Akrura. So Nanda Maharaj says to Akrura, he said, you know, I know you are being protected by Kamsa and that Kamsa is very cruel and demonic. And so Kamsa's protection is just like some butcher who is keeping animals. He will keep the animals just to kill them in the future. So Kamsa doesn't give protection. Kamsa is so selfish, he killed the sons of his own sister. He killed Devaki's son, six sons. Nanda Maharaj said, I, I cannot believe that he can ever protect the citizens, the pe he, will never, he will never protect the people of Mathura. So if the heads of the government, if they are only interested in their own self, then they can never look after the welfare of the people. And 
So Nanda Maharaj spoke to Krishna very nice words in Akrura, forgot about his tiredness, about his journey coming all the way from Mathura to Vrindavan. And this is the end of the chapter, Akrura's arrival in Vrindavan. Okay, so are there any questions? Not really, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, because Prabhup Shaya and Kawa, Song Kawan. They, they are here also. Anyway, I will say some things. Uh, I was thinking that uh, Nanda Maharaj is asking about Kamsa. So, after you will, we will hear, Krishna is going to go to Mathura and he's going to fight the wrestling match and then he will also fight with Kamsa and kill Kamsa. And when he kills Kamsa, everybody is happy except for one person. The mother of Kamsa. <laughs> Kamsa's mother, Padmavati, she was very sorry that, oh, my poor son, he's been murdered, he's been killed, Krishna's killed my son. <laughs> Actually, Kamsa's mother, you see, Kamsa was also born in the Yadu dynasty. But his mother, she was raped by this demon. And the result of the, the, this demon raping this uh, Padmavati, she gave birth to this child who grew up to be the demon Kamsa. So everybody was happy when Krishna killed Kamsa, except for this Kamsa's mother. <laughs> and we hear how Nanda Maharaj is describing Kamsa. He said, this Kamsa, you know, Nanda Maharaj is a very nice man, he's very gentle, very kind to everyone. But he also knew that Kamsa, this Kamsa is very cruel. And we see also another interesting thing, you know, we're always, we serve Krishna, then we offer food to Krishna, but if we go, if we go to visit Krishna's home, if you go to Krishna, just like Akrura came to visit Krishna's home in Vrindavan, Krishna, Krishna served him, Krishna served Akrura. Krishna washed the feet of Akrura and then he brought nice meal, nice food and offered to Akrura, took very nice care of him. Just like we take care of Krishna, Krishna takes care of his devotees. <laughs> Uh, 
ต้อนรับอคูระเป็นอย่างดีเลยนะคะถ้าเพราะว่าอันนี้เนี่ยอคูระเนี่ยไปหาพิชนาไปที่บ้านของพิชนาพิชนาก็ต้อนรับอย่างดีนะคะเหมือนกันนะคะการที่เราเนี่ยรับใช้พิชนาตอนนี้เลยเวลาเราแบบไปหาพระองค์เราดูได้เลยว่าพระองค์เนี่ยจะต้อนรับสาวกของพระองค์ดีแบบไหน Krishna doesn't say I'm God you have to serve me <laughs> Krishna is very he takes a humble position he he's a servant of his devotees Krishna เนี่ยทรงไม่มาบอกว่าโอ้ข้าเนี่ยเป็นพระเจ้าทุกคนทำเพื่อข้าอย่างเดียวทำให้ข้าอย่างเดียวแต่ตรงนี้เนี่ย Krishna เนี่ยมาเอ่อมีความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนแล้วก็มาให้ความเอ่อให้การรับใช้มารับใช้สาวของเรา So this is the special nature of Krishna dealing with his devotees in Vrindavan. And it is been the nature of Krishna, and the shape of the shape of the relationship of Krishna with the devotees of Krishna in Vrindavan. Got two questions, Vimal. Okay. Okay. First one from Shaya Madhuri. Share, please. Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dana Baba Nam, please accept my humble obeisances, according to Sila Bhagavan. Pati Pati, mi kham song style vadi lakha wa, yang Raja Wong Yadua kha, thi kham sa, ko pen yad kong Krishna man kan. Yang niya, ta kut wa, Mahara lao hai fang wa, mea kong kham sa niya dong kong kun doi maan, kham sa ka lai oma pen maan. Tae, mai thun wa, kham sa niya mei dae pen maan doi takun, chai mei kha? Kho zai kham thang bhi mei? โดยโดยกำเนิดเขาเป็นโดยใช้กำเนิดพ่อพ่อเขาเป็นมารใช่ไหมอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเขาเป็นตระกูลเขาไม่ได้เป็นแต่ว่าในตระกูลมีเขาคนเดียวใช่ไหมที่เป็นมารใช่ไหมคะเออใช่ใช่โอเคโอเคโอเคค่ะ so her question is regarding the when you say that kamsa mother kamsa father is actually demon who Who read the Padmavati? So, it, so that means in uh, the entire dynasty, Yadu dynasty, there were no no demon. It's only Kamsa who is the demon in the entire dynasty. Yes, right. The Yadu dynasty, they were all devotees. They were known to be great devotees. That's why Lord Krishna took his birth in that family. And Lord Krishna called, told all the demigods they should take birth there too. So yeah, the Yadu dynasty. There, there, there are two lines of Yad. There are two lines of Kshatriya kings. One line comes from the sun god, and one line comes from the moon god. Lord Rama, he came in the line from the sun god, and Lord Krishna, he came in the line from the moon god. ในในของราชวงศ์กษัตริย์นะจะมีสองสายด้วยกันก็คือทางหนึ่งเนี่ยก็คือทางของพระอาทิตย์นะคะอย่างเช่นพระพระรามเนี่ยพระรามเป็นตระกูลของที่มาจากทางของพระอาทิตย์นะแต่ว่าคริสเตียนเนี่ยทรงเป็นตระกูลที่มาจากพระจันทร์ So uh, the sun god, that's the line of Iksvaku, right? Mm -hmm. Krishna says in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, I give the Vibhishwan, Vibhishwan to Manu, Manu to Iksvaku. So that's the line of Lord Ramachandra, he's coming from Iksvaku. <laughs> พระอาทิตย์เนี่ยก็คืออิชวาคูนั่นเองอิชวาคูในชื่อนี้คุ้น
่ในตอนเสียบทที่ตามบทที่4เนี่ยเราก็จะได้ยินนะคะว่าความรู้นี้ก็ช่างบอกว่าแต่เดิมเนี่ยท่านให้กับวิวัชวานวิวัชวานส่งให้มนุษย์และหลังจากนั้นก็ส่งให้อิชวาคุ But Krishna is coming from the Yadu dynasty, the Yadu Yadavas. Yadu Maharaj Yadu was a great devotee king, so Krishna took birth in that line. แต่ว่าคริสตันเนี่ยทรงมาจากมาจากที่เป็นพระพระจันทร์นะคะหรือว่าในราชวงศ์ยาดูนั่นเองค่ะราชวงศ์ยาดูเนี่ยมาจากมหาราชท่านหนึ่งนะที่ชื่อว่ายาดูมหาราช And the 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 father the actual husband of Padmavati was Ugrasena so Kamsa he was like a father to Kamsa although Kamsa wasn't his own son But because he was, you know, his wife was raped, so he accept he accepted the child like his own son. But Kamsa, when Kamsa grew up, he put his father in the prison. The Palaya of Padmavati, เนี่ยชื่อว่าอุกราเซนะอุกราเซนะเนี่ยเป็นเหมือนกับพ่อพ่อเลี้ยงหรือว่าเขาก็ดูแลคำสั่งเหมือนเป็นลูกของตนมาโดยตลอดแต่ว่าในตอนโตมาเนี่ยปรากฏว่าคำสั่งเนี่ยทรยศโดยการเอาอุกราเซนาเนี่ยไปขังคุกแล้วก็ของลาแห่ and then Krishna and then he he not only put อุกราเซนา he put v a s u d e v and Devaki in the prison also Devaki was his sister แล้วก็ไม่ใช่แค่เอาคุณพ่ออุกราเซนาเข้าคุกอย่างเดียวแต่ว่าให้เดวกีซึ่งเป็นน้องสาวแล้วก็น้องเขยเนี่ยเข้าคุกไปด้วย And he killed the six sons of Devaki and Vasudev one after another แล้วก็การฆ่าของเขาเนี่ยก็คือเขาเนี่ยก็ตายโดยเออแล้วก็ฆ่าลูกทั้งหกของลูกน้องสาวตัวเองด้วย So he was really a demon And he tried. He, he sent all of demon friends to kill all the young children who were born around Vrindavan. Then he sent friends to kill all the young children who were born around Vrindavan. Then he sent friends to kill all the young children who were born around Vrindavan. Now, so, so, now, sometimes if the if this if the son is a big demon, sometimes the father will just go away to the forest, just to get away from the son. He will just go away and live in the forest. He will just renounce everything. Some times, if the son is a big demon, he will just go away and live in the forest. He will just renounce everything. Some times, if the son is a big demon, he will just go away and live in the forest. He will just renounce everything. Some times, if the son is a big demon, he will just go away and live in the forest. He will just renounce everything. But Ugra Singh, he got put in the prison. Kamsa got his father and put him in the jail. Then Ugra Singh, yeah, got to Kamsa, put him in the jail. So to be to be the son of a king is very dangerous. การเป็นลูกกษัตริย์เนี่ยมันก็เป็นอะไรที่อันตรายคุณเจ๊ฟ้าให้คำถามครับคุณเจ๊ฟ้าบัดมาวตี was raped and she knows what the bad character is and okay Kamsa was an exception because he was a son but even after Kamsa demise the body left It seems when um, there was a pastime when uh, Rohini is describing their pastimes, and uh, Subhadra was there. How come Padmavati was still so negative? Because the association she had was very good by then, but so many years the negativity still stayed in her heart. She was still so negative, or was that just a pastime that she was supposed to play? Yes, that's her nature. She, her nature. She's a very talkative woman, and she would even talk about Krishna's pastimes, which Krishna was doing 
things which Krishna would do privately, she would talk in the public and tell people about them. It was so she wasn't very sense controlled. She wasn't very thoughtful about what she would say. Uh, why was she being so negative when Rohini was talking about uh, Krishna Balaram telling the pastimes to uh, Draupadi who had arrived? But uh, she was still so negative that everybody just quiet down. So I'm just, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, despite of so many years and everything, but the negativity was still there. Is it? Yeah, that's her, yeah. her nature. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Surprising she could still be with Lord Krishna, even though negative, her nature is negative. I mean, you know, it's um, because Lord Krishna is all positive. Anybody who sees him or are, is around him changes, but she still remains so negative. <coughs> really is positive. Where did you read about it? Uh, we heard about it, Gurudev, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about it before the Bhagavad Gita seminar. Uh, we were talking about this, <coughs> that, uh, you know, when uh, uh, Krishna and Balaram had returned back and then uh, Rohini was stopped explaining the pastimes as when they were young, they had back in Vrindavan. That time Subhadra Devi was just standing at the door. Lord Jagannath, yeah, Lord Jag that time we were discussing this past time then. So that time Padmavati came and sat in the room and she was still very negative. So that's why I'm wondering, I mean, despite of so many years of association, so much negativity still be was still sitting in her heart. And she was around the Lord, but still very negative. Yes, it's it's for rasa, to give more rasa. Ah, okay. Mm. Mm. Okay, got it. Got it. That's it. Yes, rasa means no more questions. <laughs> That's the Lord's first time. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, Yuna has a question. Yes, Yuna. Yuna, how did they? Yes, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, the question is, uh, how is um, the uh, disappearance of suffering uh, related uh, to the disappearing of our false ego? disappearance of suffering yes uh, how it is uh, uh, related uh, to to the disappearance of our false ego oh i don't, I don't know about this <laughs> the disappearance of suffering maybe, related to maybe the he mean ego. like when we read about the a pastime like krishna killing the demons pastime that will destroy our uh, our anarthas or something like that. Is something yes. like that? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes, Mataji. What are you saying, Arjuna? Uh, when we heard about a past time that Krishna killed this demon, it will help us to be free from the lust. It will help us be free from anger, greed, like that. So how it it uh, related? You, you understand? Yep. You mean Krishna's pastimes? Hearing Krishna's pastimes help to get us free from lust? Yes, because we say by hearing this pastime, it will help us to be free from uh, lusty desire. It will help us be free from anger, greed, like that. Different demons represent different characteristics different bad habits. 
Is it? Yes. Well. Of course, the false ego, false ego is identifying with the material body. So that's the cause of all distress. When we identify with the material body, then there will be distress. So we want to get rid of the false ego. We have to understand ourselves as a spiritual soul. And then when we understand our spiritual self, then we will know the nature of the soul, that there is no suffering. It's only the body which suffers. So the distress of the material world is due to the body, due to identifying with the body. The soul doesn't suffer. The nature of the soul is eternal bliss and knowledge. But if we identify with the body, then we will suffer. There will be suffering. So we want to get rid of suffering, we have to transcend the bodily consciousness. That is the key to getting rid of all distress. And that is the, the meaning of coming to uh, the platform of true ego. False ego is identifying with the body and thinking I am the controller and I am the enjoyer and I am the proprietor. But the true ego is to understand I have nothing, nothing belongs to me and I am just a tiny soul, tiny part and, part and parcel of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So that is the meaning of true ego. So when we have that pure ego, then there's no suffering. You understand, Yuna? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Now it's very clear. Thank you very much. Okay, Rajasuya has a question. Thank you very much for very good discussion about Akura. I really enjoy to hear this. Akura is living in Kansa Kingdom, he still become a very good devotee and he is in ecstasy and he rolls on the ground in Vrindavan before you see that Krishna. And my, I also heard that when we take the darshan of Krishna, we have to see, first take darshan of feet, and then we go up. Uh, and also my, my question is, when we, when we, when devotee meet each other also, do we apply the same process, Guru Maharaj? Yes. If it's a senior person, you meet a senior person, then generally you could observe something similar principle, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, not strictly necessary, but there's no harm. Out of respect, we bow down. Just like we meet the senior devotee, we will all offer our obeisances, we'll all bow down before him. So when you bow down to someone, you're not looking up at him, you're looking down, right? So you bow down, you go first, you go first to the feet, and then you come up. Do we also, uh, sometimes we, we saw that uh, Krishna also was the feet of his devotee, and also when we bow down, sometimes we like to touch the feet of the devotee, but and many devotees, they are not allowed to touch Maharaj. Why is that? Well, because we, we, we're we not worthy, we don't consider ourselves worthy of this, you see. The washing the feet, that should that's something which is done for the pure souls, for the great souls. 
if you just pour water, that's okay. You know, some people come out, you know, and the road is very hot, and they'll just come out and pour water. Okay, they don't touch your feet, but if they actually wash your feet, and take your feet, and dry your feet, then it's not, you know, you don't like that. We don't like that. Uh, the, that kind of thing is done only for very, very special souls. Although, in some parts, like in Bangladesh, it's very common, they like to do this. It's their custom. But uh, in ISKCON, we have the policy that better, that we don't allow it, at least not in the temples. It's not allowed. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, today is the appearance day of Guru Govinda Swami Maharaj. Do you think we can share some, we can talk something about him? Well, he was a very, very nice, uh, very great personality who gave his life for Srila Prabhupada's mission. He joined Srila Prabhupada's mission and came to Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada took him into ISKCON and he v dedicated himself to ISKCON and he worked very hard in Arisa. He got all Prabhupada's books translated, the Bhagavatam and like that. And he did a lot of translation work and he did a lot of preaching. He was a very good preacher. He certainly very advanced devotee. Very, very special soul. Came to Prabhupada's movement. He was one of the few Indian people to come in Prabhupada's time and to give himself fully. And he's, he, he dedicated himself to working in Arisa, but he also traveled. He went to Europe, he went to Africa, he went, he went many places, he traveled. But he built up a very beautiful temple there in Bhubaneswar. We got the land donated and Prabhupada gave him the land. He said, you go, you can stay, you go there and develop it. And so he went there, there was nothing, it was just bare land, it was a desert, it was a very quiet area. And he went there and stayed there and he developed the place. And gradually by his preaching, he attracted many people, many young men came there and they became his disciples. He helped a lot because and that, at that time there was some difficulty, there were some spiritual teachers falling down and having spiritual difficulty and devotees were having a lot of doubts and so they came to him and he could overcome, he could remove all their doubts by his very strong preaching and by his very good example. He could remove all their doubts and he gave them faith in Prabhupada and faith in Krishna consciousness again. So he did a lot of valuable work there and we're very much indebted to him for his contribution. And actually Arissa is one of the most fertile fields in India. Many of our sannyasis in our Krishna consciousness movement, they all come from Arissa. Many of them. So Gorgavinda Maharaj, he was the first one. Okay, Gorgavinda Ma Maharaja Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, is that another question, Archana? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sarat Purnima? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Sarat Purnima? What does she want? Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hello, Prana. Ajana Lirimi Akhaba. อ่าบางอันในในคริสตบุกแล้วก็จะปรารถนาได้ยินว่าคนที่เราจะไปดามคนที่เราจะไปดามเราต้องมีจิตสํานึกแบบอกุราใช่มั้ยอันนี้พว
ไปแบบพักผ่อนหย่อนใจแล้วแบบอย่างนั้นเขาก็ได้รับเบนเฟตใช่ไหมคะอันนี้อยากจะให้บุรุมาราชอธิบายชัดเจนหน่อยค่ะขอบคุณค่ะโอเคบุรุมาราช as you explain that when we go to Vrindavan we should have a mood like Akura but sometimes we can also see that some devotee they they say that okay we might we might not have the A pure consciousness like that, but by going to the holy place, the holy place will, uh, the power of the holy place will change our, us to be like a sincere devotee or serious devotee. And sometimes they just go in a relaxing mood to the Vrindavan. Uh, will that uh, benefit them? Will that still benefit them, or well, or a little benefit. But not a lot. Of, I mean, they could get much more benefit. But according to how we approach, Krishna said, "As you surrender to me, I reward you accordingly." And so, if they approach Vrindavan like that in a very casual way, then they will get the response in a casual way. They won't get the full mercy of Krishna. <laughs> ศิโรราคุณกระชาก็บอกในภพกิตาเหมือนกันนะว่าพระองค์เนี่ยจะมีการตอบสนองตอบสาวกเนี่ยตามระดับแห่งการศิโรราคของแต่ละคนถ้าเกิดว่าบุคคลเนี่ยคิดว่าโอเคไปโอเคสบายสบายไปอะไรอย่างนี้กระชาก็จะตอบสนองกับเขาในรูปแบบนั้นเหมือนกันเขาจะได้รับประโยชน์อย่างแน่นอนแต่ว่าประโยชน์ไม่ได้รับเต็มที่ You, there are certain things you're supposed to observe, like the first day you get there, you don't you don't eat food. The fasting, fasting in in the night. You get maybe you get there in the afternoon, so you fast, remain fasting, one night. Next morning, you shave your head, take a bath, shave your head, and breakfast. การไปวินดาวันนะคะคือวันแรกที่เราไปถึงเนี่ยความจริงเราควรที่จะถือศีลอดสมมติไปถึงตอนกลางวันอะไรอย่างนี้เราก็ถือศีลอดทั้งวันอะไรอย่างนี้และอีกวันรุ่งขึ้นเราค่อยรับประทานแล้วก่อนก่อนวันรุ่งขึ้นก็คืออาบน้ําซับผมถ้าโกรธถ้าเป็นผู้ชายก็โกนผมให้เรียบร้อยแล้วก็หลังจากนั้นก็ค่อยรับประทานอะไรนะ Yeah every everyone has their own different motives coming to the holy place You know, what are you doing? Why are you coming? What are you looking for? So it's not the same for everyone. But everyone benefits whatever the reason they come. They'll benefit. Some people will benefit more, and some will benefit less. Of course, you can also commit offenses. Sometimes, but if you come to the holy place, if you commit offenses, then that's not good. That's also possible. But we have to be careful not to commit offenses in the holy place. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Uh, you, Yuna Mataji said she have one more question. Yes, Yuna Mataji. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. What is a true ego? Is it soul or not? A true ego, we said, true ego is to be the servant of Krishna. True ego is to understand I am the servant of Krishna. Right? It's a consciousness. Ego is is like it. What is your false ego is thinking I'm the controller, I'm the enjoyer, I'm the proprietor. So true ego. Is to understand I am the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. Understand? It's a characteristic of the soul. Yes, 
Yes, it's clear now. I've understood. Thank you. Okay. So we'll stop here. Thank you very much, Archana, for translation. And who was translating Nepali tonight? Uh, this one, we don't have Nepali translation for much. Maybe next week I will change to the to the uh, the one we were using for Bhagavad Gita. That account we can have uh, Nepali translation as well. So okay. from, from next week, there will be change in the password and username. I will make the new post and share it with you all. With oh. all the devotees. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Some devotee was asking today. Himala Tamaji was asking. So sorry for that, Mataji. From next class, we will have Nepali translation as well. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Go back to Vrinda ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna.